Welcome to Public Character Channel. But for for the resistance to suddenly act as if they don't like conspiracy theories. I at least actually, well, I argue against conspiracy theories. I don't try to ban them. Um, I'm thinking that it's argument and free speech works on that. When we're living through the biggest conspiracy theory of all, this Russia nonsense invented by Hillary, as she always does, when she's caught in some sort of scandal. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness there was a spring of hope it was the winter of despair we had everything before us we had nothing before us we were all going direct to heaven we were all going directly the other way in short the period was so far unlike the present period that some of the noisiest authorities insisted on it being received for good or evil in the superlative degree of comparison only and Coulter, a true icon of americana joins us first time she was on 15 years ago i was just trying to make points i guess but I, I i got to meet her in person at the rnc and did an interview i appreciate her joining us to talk about the onslaught the blitzkrieg against the first amendment and the other cowards in washington are scared to cover it they all want jobs i guess with google or facebook or apple later with three trillion dollars between them but ann coulter has hundreds of videos on youtube that are negative about her force fed so do I. 96% of conservative sites are buried. Uh, they block everything. Shadow banning's at over 93%. I'm completely blackballed. And the left has openly come out when Obama saw that Trump won and set up this office of countering propaganda in the Pentagon. But it's part of the CIA. And that, I've learned, is the group with no attention that is working with the leftists and the media to have the mainstream media fact check all conservatives and ban us and then put their results on top ahead of manipulating the election and then senator warner wyden and murphy are all in obama's defense authorization saying they would run the counter to trump so trump needs to remove this this is a cancer and Coulter joins us to talk about being one of the most banned people in the world and where she thinks this is going with only 70 days left before what I think is the most important election, not just in U.S. history, but world history. Ann Coulter, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Good to be in the bunker with you. <laughs> well, we're in the bunker. You, you heard my little two-minute rant. You're the expert on this. What would you call this period in history? Um, it is quite like nothing I think this country has seen before. I mean, what they've done to you and many others um, <laughs> the left, the resistance, a military term, by the way, if Trump had lost the election and, as Hillary did, said, I'm joining the resistance, um, they would have said this is a dog whistle to the KKK. It's a military term. And then imagine if right-wingers started uh, beating up Hillary supporters, as we have seen left-wingers and Antifa beating up Trump supporters. I think the country would recognize we're in the middle of a fascist uprising. But no, because the fascist uprising uprising is being cheered on and and encouraged by the mainstream media um it just goes um it goes without without comment but for for the resistance to suddenly act as if they don't like conspiracy theories I at least actually, well, I argue against conspiracy theories. I don't try to ban them. Um, I'm thinking that it's argument and free speech works on that. When we're living through the biggest conspiracy theory of all, this Russia nonsense invented by Hillary, as she always does when she's caught in some sort of scandal. She did with Jennifer Flower. She um, went on TV and talked about some man in Arkansas. Vast right-wing conspiracies. Walked. Right, up for to, to explain Monica Lewinsky, both of which turned out to be true. When her health care plan went down, she accused the media of, of, of buying into and promoting right-wing talking points because you know how the media just hangs on, well, my every word. Um, just whatever I, I put out there, they're repeating right there in the New York Times. Um, it's just been absolute madness. So when from her, every time there was she's caught in some scandal, she finds some mysterious bad actor, malefactor, Linda Tripp, conspiring against her and her husband. So when um, the Democrats are caught in the middle of WikiLeaks, which was very embarrassing for the Democrats there, they were sabotaging Bernie Sanders, 
um, Democrats all over Capitol Hill were furious with with the They GOP. were running Google. They were gaming everything. They were getting yeah. the questions beforehand from CNN. And that's when Hillary concocted the conspiracy of Russia and Trump conspiring to steal the election from her. At the time, as as you'll read in my book, Resistance is Futile, How the Trump-Hating Left Lost His Collective Mind, at the time, all the mainstream press, press the New York Times, was utterly skeptical, could barely control their laughing over Hillary's conspiracy theory about Russia, saying, um, well, um, paraphrasing, wow, even the John Birchers didn't come up with something like this. Well, yeah, they oh, said that. And they pointed the out moment. Hillary has the Russian problem with Uranium One. Oh, oh, she has plenty of problems, including colluding with Russia um, for that Russian dossier put together by Christopher Steele. It was only after Trump won the election that suddenly all these respectable news outlets that had ridiculed Hillary's Russia conspiracy theory at the time, when she was using to deflect from from the Wikipedia leaks, um, suddenly they went back and, oh my gosh, maybe there's something to this Russian business. Now they're the ones dragging this country through a completely demented conspiracy uh, between the Trump campaign. There was no Trump campaign. I mean, it would be weird enough to say, it was Donald Trump. I mean, that that was exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> he didn't have advance men and pollsters and expensive campaign consultants. His idea was, I know, I'll fly around the country giving speeches and pushing popular ideas, and that'll win me the White House. They laughed at him throughout his campaign, uh, and then when it worked, oh, my gosh, there must have been a secret conspiracy with a campaign that didn't exist. You're absolutely right. Let me ask you this, Ann Coulter, because you're 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 one of the most banned people after me, and, I, and believe me, I, I don't even like that distinction, but I'll I'll go with it. Why are you so banned? Why is Prager? He's he's as banned as you and I. Yeah. I mean, so why are they doing this? It's so authoritarian, and then they then they they call for us all to be banned in thousands of articles. Then CNN goes Friday. Trump's crazy. No one's banning anybody. When anybody can look at the numbers. It's like 96%. So what's going on there? Oh, yes. Well, um, you have about 800 million followers. That's why That's why you're banned. And, and um, with Prager and me, um, they tried to – I don't know about Prager. I know very specifically um, how the media has treated me throughout Well, so talk career. about yourself because you're one of them. It's you're the game. top five most banned people. I suspect that's true. Um, it began when I, when I first started going on TV um, for slander and treason and godless and so on. Their idea was, okay, we'll bring her on TV, we'll treat her like she's David Duke, so we can just what they did to Trump. We'll communicate to the public: do not read this person, do not listen to this person. We'll scowl when she walks on, we'll yell at her, we'll take some joke out of context and blow it up into a huge big deal. But every time they did that, people would hear a enough of me on TV to realize that they believed me and not the media. Whomever the interviewer was would end up looking bad. I'd sell lots of books. So I'd say about five books back, they just decided, that's it. We're going to pretend she doesn't exist. And I, I mean, the, the only solace I have is it's got to be driving them crazy as I keep writing these books. They must have interns running in. Look at what she says here. We've got to attack her. Settle down, Dennis. We're not putting her on air. Well, I was We're about to say, uh, let's talk about your new book, Resistance is Futile. What a great title. But that's it. They couldn't beat you by misrepresenting what you said. So now they are just banning you completely. Even though it's killing the NFL, it's killing Hollywood to ban conservatives, to be anti-American. They're all really destroying themselves uh, in the process. Well, the danger is, um, I mean, it hasn't happened yet, but I have to say I've worried about this for some years now. It sounds like a science fiction um, nightmare of mine that I just wake up one day, try to click on to, you know, the Breitbart report or email with <laughs> email with Matt Drudge, and it would just shut down. I wouldn't be able to get through. There would be no Breitbart.com. Um, there would be no Daily Caller. We won't be able to communicate. Well, stay there because deplatforming and the Chinese social score model is what they're bringing here. They're trying to cut our software off that runs InfoWars.com. Ann Coulter, AnnCoulter.com, her new book. We'll talk about it, Shell on the Other Side.
Resistance is futile. What an amazing headline. What an amazing name. Can't wait to read it. And then we'll talk about what does Trump need to do with 69 and a half days left to counter this purge. All right. Ann Coulter, one of the top selling political authors of all time, is with us. Her new book is Resistance is Futile. What an amazing title. I've read many of her books. Thank God for Ann Coulter helping get the ground ready for Donald Trump. And Trump's not perfect, but he's under attack because he's a real president. And specifically, the Democrats have met with Senator Warner, Wyden, and Murphy. And, and I've got all that. We're going to put it on screen. Executive orders Obama signed before he left office, taking defense authorization money, Pentagon money, and using it to, quote, counter right-wing media, which they all call Russian. So when you see... CNN, MSNBC, the New York Times involved as Project Veritas exposed in everybody's accounts censoring us. It's the perfect storm of dying media, the Democratic Party, and big tech all merging to steal the 2018 election. They admit they're doing it. And I know you're aware of all that. You've been shadow banned. You've been completely blocked. They put nothing but negative search results 10 pages deep in front of you. Used to, you'd be number one with what you did because it was popular. They've broken their algorithm to try to steal this election. I think they've jumped the shark. I think it's gonna backfire. When Hillary couldn't control the media, when she tried to control Google, it didn't work. Now they've openly taken the dying dinosaur media who aren't just now failed news, they're now anti-free speech Stasi and put them in charge. This is beyond, uh, like you said, a science fiction novel. So what, A, what's your take on that? And B, as you're being unpersoned like I am, what do you think the president, who's the only guy in government speaking out against this, what do you think he should do? What should Congress do? Well, there are things that can be done, and and just to reiterate what you just said, consider how strong liberals consider their arguments. Um, they've got all of the mainstream media, 100 percent, ABC, NBC, CBS, all of the cables, the major news, newspapers, the major news magazines. They've got Yahoo, AOL. They have the swamp in Washington. They've got Hollywood. They have Silicon Valley. And now they're down to the last corners of the Internet. Oh, no, conservatives can speak to one another. We must shut it off. I have to say, if I were advising liberals with their insane opinions, I'd say, yep, that's what you got to do. You got to shut off free speech on the Internet. Um, and and I mean, I mean, it reminds me of um, Robert Mueller's indictment of the 13 Russians, which I describe in my book. Um, it, it, the most interesting thing about that indictment and that you know, Mueller being you know, terrified of these Russian bots and their and their woke blacks Instagram account um, is that the Office of Special Counsel knows less about social media than even the senators questioning Mark Zuckerberg. They have no idea how it works, and and the argument is basically that 13 Russians um, with a few Facebook ads managed to overwhelm the entire American media, which all. Oh, also kind of had its finger on the scale, making very clear you are not to vote. Oh, New Trump. York Times, 98% chance that Hillary was going to win. And so instead <laughs> of saying America had a populist movement, oh, it's the Russians. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Russians, 13 Russians. You know, if 13 Russians can overwhelm our entire media, I got to tell you, Alex, I hope they're running our country because things would run <laughs> so smoothly. Um, no, I agree. Really are powerful. they giving us 4.6% growth rate? Are they giving us a rebuilt military, <laughs> thousands of factories? All, uh, wow, the Russians really love us. <laughs> yes, and and they put they put Trump in the presidency. So thank you, Russia. Um, there are things that can be done. The, the overall point, I think... But that'll be the headline, deceptively, not sarcasm. And right. Coulter thanks <laughs> Russia... And Coulter thanks <laughs> Russia for electing Trump. <laughs> yes, they've become. More, that's one of my favorite parts of the resistance. How um, you know they always make fun of right wingers for being, um, or you know, Christian, someone who, who's afraid someone someplace is is having fun. No, that's them. They have become the moral scolds. They have become the man. Buzz the big office and the big, but the big briefcase going in. And no, no humor is gone. They they have no. Sense of irony, sarcasm. They're the ones who will go on and, and patrol social media tweets and, and apparently bots. But the end result is I think these, these huge um, 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 avid
avenues of First Amendment speech, uh, Google, um, Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube, they, they have to have the First Amendment applied to them. These, these, these idiot conservatives at certain places, I won't mention like National Review, you know, they think they're so brave and brilliant saying, well, it's not the government, so it doesn't violate the First Amendment. No, I'm sorry. At some point, when you have a total monopoly on how people can communicate with one another, we do have legal concepts like natural monopolies and utilities. And unless they start living under the First Amendment, um, I, I think the law should force them to. Right now, the law is written in such a way so that they are simultaneously publishers, so they will determine who can can be heard or seen on their airwaves, so they're acting like a New York Times. And day. immune. Yeah, and also, yeah, and I'm totally immune from suit. Um, so I'm sorry, you, you don't get those kinds of privileges in a country that still believes in free speech. Well, exactly. They ran a Hill article, a fake poll, looked at the, at the methodology, and then they're paying for it as an ad. Majority of Americans say ban Alex Jones. They took me as a target, misrepresented what I said. Now they're banning everybody else after me, and thank God Trump's trying to move against him. Ann Coulter is our guest. Talk a few minutes about, we only got like four minutes left, I hope you'll come back soon because so much is happening, 15 years is too long, about your, 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 your term, resistance is futile. Because obviously that's from Star Trek. I've made that point. Yes. The universities, the left, everything is, they're saying resistance is futile, but like you said, they've already banned us everywhere, Hollywood, TV, everywhere. Now they want to control people talking to their cousins on Facebook. I think <laughs> they've jumped the shark. I think this is backfiring. I certainly think overall the resistance is, is backfiring. I mean, I find myself reacting this way. I've been a little testy with the president for not even starting the wall, his central campaign promise. And then and then the left goes off on some crazy, you know, the Access Hollywood tape. Oh, he admits to committing sexual assault on there. No, he didn't. He said they let you do it. That is by definition. It's, it's like Elvis. Assault. He said the women are jumping on you. Yeah, it was. It was. He was actually talking about celebrity culture and with some degree of disapproval. All of which I go through in my book: the craziness over Charlottesville and how it was, you know, dog whistle to I don't know. Again, the Klan. It's always the non-existent Klan. Most people in the Klan are, are putting in expense reports with the FBI. Exactly. Um, by saying both sides, both sides, both sides, they, they they come out with these outrageously unfair attacks, and they drive me right back into his corner. Now, you know, look. If, if Democrats care about their fellow Americans, the working class, um, the middle class, even computer programmers who are losing jobs to the to the H one B workers, um, can't we join together and 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 do good things for the people already here? It's not like Trump is a down the line Republican. It's not like we don't have one of the most open borders already. Exactly. So let me ask you right. this question: What happens if they win the midterms, the Democrats? What happens if they lose? That's the key questions. Well, a, what is your prediction for the midterms, and what happens? either way. Well, I'm worried. The, the historical odds are that we are going to have a blue wave. Um, so the odds are Democrats do at least win the House. Um, Since the Civil War. Well, they'll definitely impeach him. They'll impeach him for a hangnail. It doesn't matter. Their base is white hot. And I think it'll pretty much be the end of a lot of the Trump agenda. On the on the optimistic side, um, they will look crazy if they impeach him. And most of the things Trump promised during his campaign, he doesn't need Congress for. He doesn't need Congress to build a wall. He's the commander-in-chief. Look at your pocket constitution. It's his job to protect the borders. So maybe he could get back to the things he promised during the campaign if he if once once. Congress is completely cut off to him. <laughs> so what you're kind of predicting, because since the Civil War, the Demo uh, whoever's you know in power loses the House, but things are a little different now. Gut level, what do you think, Ann? Yeah. I really don't know. I don't know. So, That's so if they win, are good. I say when I don't know. <laughs> I agree. So, so if they if they win, they go crazy. What happens if they lose? Um, well, they'll, it'll be a lot of fun. They'll go crazy, but it won't be the end of the Trump agenda. We'll still, and by the way, we were probably going to hold the Senate. That much I'll predict. And it also depends a lot on what Trump does over the next few months. I think he needs to go back to campaign mode, do nothing. His calendar should be blocked off September. No, I agree. October. How do people do go against a president that's given him a 4.6 growth rate? How do you piss on prosperity? That's true, but... Um, 
Um, you never know what's good. There, I, I mean, I was just down at the New York Stock Exchange yesterday um, asking them, come on, it's got to fall. There's gravity. It can't keep going up forever. And, oh, boy, watch out when, when the stock market falls. All right. The new book is Resistance Futile and Coulter and Coulter.com. Great to have you back on. Hope we don't totally get put in a gulag here. We're both being massively censored. Thank you so much for joining us. Please join us again very soon. Absolutely. Thanks, Alex. Bye-bye. There you go. What a heretic. Joining the most banned show in the world, Infowars.com, Newswars.com. Roger Stone has come out and said he does now believe he's about to be indicted. You'll have that exclusive straight ahead in just two minutes when we come back and a bunch of other guests, your phone calls, and then all the other news. But the good news is Trump's awake. Please subscribe like this if you find this video helpful.